it's Marianne from Yarnworks Studio and today I'm bringing you a really simple easy pattern that anyone can make. Uh, all you need is a few little tools but today it's the velvety scrunchies. So I have one made here and in this video we'll go over making um, a full one from scratch. I'm gonna do a light pink one after this but uh, I did this one just to show you how quick and easy it is. So stay tuned for the whole pattern because uh, it won't take very long and it's a really fun make. So first I'll just talk about it a little bit. This is the velvety scrunchie and it's constructed with an elastic on the inside which I can kind of show you if I pull it out like this and I'll do a close up here as well. Uh, and then it's simply this velvety yarn which is amazing yarn, uh, perfect feel for a scrunchie and uh, it makes this really awesome uh, product that then you can sell or you can make a whole bunch of. I'll show you everything that I used for it and of course you can get creative with it and it really does not take very long. So to start with the yarn, so the one that I just made was in this Bernat Velvet and this is a really squishy yarn. I bought mine at Walmart uh, a long time ago. You can see these giant balls, you can make a ton of scrunchies. I'll calculate it and actually put it in the notes during the, uh, during the tutorial just to let you know how much you can make out of one of these giant balls, but it is um, a polyester yarn and 315 yards. I think we use about 20 here. I'm not going to try to do the math here, but uh, I'll put up what it is. And it's bulky. Uh, it recommends a 6.5 millimeter hook, which is what I actually used. So here's my hook, 6.5 millimeter. Um, I uh, also use scissors as every project will. And I use a tapestry needle, which is a blunt ended needle uh, with a pretty wide eye because you need to be able to fit this thicker yarn through it. And I use an elastic. So for my tutorial, I'm actually gonna use this lighter colored elastic. All I did was go to Walmart and I got uh, a couple set. These are Goody brand. Uh, but what you want is a nice stretchy elastic of a pretty decent size. Uh, and these ones have been great. These are the Ouchless ones. Uh, a 30 pack cost me, I'm sure, under $10. Um, and who doesn't have extra elastics lying around too? And you can really use any yarn, but this, I found this velvety one is amazing for just giving it texture and it gives it a little bit of shimmer uh, and is super soft and really easy to fold into the scrunchy uh, shape that you need. So those are the materials that we'll use. Today I'm going to use this color of velvet instead of the black. Uh, and this one's called blush pink and it's a beautiful color. Uh, works really nice in all kinds of hair, uh, especially blonde hair. It's really beautiful in blonde hair. So let's go ahead and get started making it. So I'm only gonna use uh, one crochet stitch for this and it really doesn't take very long and it's very customizable. First, I'm gonna wanna find my center pull if I have it anywhere. Where did my center pull go? I haven't used this yarn in a while. Okay, perfect. So for those of you who don't know, and I'm no expert on center pull, but I, put, I prefer to center pull out of my yarn. Uh, it just keeps it a little cheap, uh, cleaner, nicer, and I often end up with this sort of, I'll call it yarn barf out of the middle. Um, but that's all right, and that pile is just where I'll pull from. I found my end here, so we're good to go. And I'm using, again, I said a light colored one for the light colored yarn, uh, but it's contrasting enough that you'll be able to see really what's going on here. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I used a black one for the darker colors and let's get started. So to start, I always slip stitch onto, hmm, pardon me, I slip stitch, a slip knot, sorry, onto my uh, needle, which is simply, let me do it one more time slower. I go over from front to back and then I pull, and this is the end of the yarn here, the yarn end, pull that in front kind of making a backwards four. And then I take the yarn, the working yarn, put it over the hook, and then I pull that loop over, pull it through, and tighten it, and that is a slip knot. I use that on almost everything that I start. And then we want to attach it to this elastic. So when I do that, typically I just do a yarn over, and I've got the elastic kind of in between and I pull and that will attach it on. And then for me, I don't want to always be pulling up through the middle. 
So I'm just gonna kind of adjust so that my crochet hook and working yarn is on the outside. Uh, and we're ready to rock and roll. So the trick with the scrunchies, you can do kind of any stitch. Now I use US term, so the stitch I'm using is a treble stitch. So first you need to chain three, one, two, and sorry, a chain is a yarn over, back to front, and then pull it through. So three chains, you can count them here. One, two, three, they're the Vs. And then we're ready to go. That just brings you up to the height that you need uh, in order to uh, get your stitches up and around. Because if we look at the finished item here, uh, the stitch is just a single round of stitches and they're quite tall. So now we're gonna do treble stitches. A treble stitch in US terms is uh, two yarn overs. So you put two loops on and then you go into your loop, which in this case is the elastic. Okay, and you yarn over and pull that up. And you don't wanna pull it like way up here. That's more something you do for a cluster. You keep it down here, so close to the, to the elastic. Yarn over again, pull it through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two which sounds like a lot, but really it's just a really long, what you might call a triple crochet. And you can see that it's joined down here, so it's nice and solid. We'll do it again. Two yarn overs, go into your elastic, yarn over, pull through. So now you have four total. You've got your original um, loop, and then you've got two yarn overs from before, and then yarn over under the elastic. Yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, and yarn over, pull through two loops. And there you have it. And now that you've done that, you can keep doing it many, many times. So all we do is treble crochets all the way around. And let me just show you how it looks. And there's a lot of tricks to it, um, but just on how many you put in. So I could just do probably maybe 20 around total and that would cover, but when you stretch it, let me get this one, when you stretch it, you may not wanna see the elastic. So I put a lot more than 20. Now this one's kind of a medium, uh, medium amount of stitches. This is probably 30 or 40 stitches. Uh, and the more stitches you add, the more um, sort of wavy it gets rather than flat. So there's a lot of sort of texture to this. So the more you put on, the better it is. Once you get around, um, let me just, I'll do one more for reference. But once you get around to the other side, what we're gonna end up with is you kind of pulling to access the elastic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop the video and then I'm gonna keep working um, all the way around. I'm gonna put a ton of stitches in and then I'll show you kind of the last few before the end and the finishing. Okay, so I've been working through this and we are up to around 60 stitches, 60 treble crochets into our elastic. You can see it's a lot fluffier, it's more rippled um, than this one because this one I only made about maybe 30 or 40 stitches in. So the more you put in, the more sort of ripple effect you get, which depends on what you're going for. Maybe you don't want it, maybe you want it more flat. Uh, so I'll show you just a couple more stitches just to show you what it what it looks like. So when I'm doing the treble, usually I do my two yarn overs and then I kind of just split this open to expose some of the elastic. And then I do my treble. And uh, yeah, you can keep going until this is like super, super, super tight if you want. Uh, but I'm gonna stop around there. I found 60 gives it a, a lot of shape, a lot of ripple, um, and also still feels really soft and squishy. Uh, so what you wanna do at the end is you want to slip stitch into the top chain of your chain three that you did at the start. And that just puts you, um, joins it up so it's all in the, in the round and ready to go. And then you don't need too much working yarn. Uh, just use your scissors. This kind of has like a really soft pipe cleaner, cleaner type feel to it. Uh, so it does fray a little bit. You will get some wispies coming off, but that is normal. So then you yarn over and pull it through to fasten off. And now you've got your full circle. I'll hold it up here so you can see. Um, you've got your full circle. So the last step is to weave in the ends. And now normally when I work in a circle like this, 
I would tend to try to weave the ends in through these, uh, the bottom of the stitches here because that's the easiest and simplest way to hide ends. However, in this, because you want it to be stretchy, you don't want to actually have loose ends tucked in there because then when they pop it open, the loose end is going to pop out and then it's going to give you an unfinished look. So in this case, we're going to put our loose ends and weave them right into the treble stitches. So I'm going to start with the um, my starting yarn here. So this was the one at the start when I made my slip knot and joined. So I am going to loop it. I am going to loop it underneath a stitch or two at the start. And then I've decided I'm going to go up this stitch. It doesn't really matter which stitch you go up. But I'm just going to kind of loop it around some of these loops. All going kind of in the same direction. And then up through the middle of the V. Now everyone has their own different finishing techniques and whatnot. Then I'm going to go around the loop of that V. And I'm going to go back down through whatever loops I want to. Um, and this is never going to be perfect, but I'm going to do the best I can. And just kind of have it tucked in there. And then what I do is I don't pull this tight again all the way. Um, I just give a little bit of uh, slack there. Cut it as close to the bottom as you can. Again, the yarn will fray a bit. Don't worry about that. Then pull the stitch up and that should have the loose end just tuck in somewhere in here. And again, it's not tucked in the bottom, so it's not going to pop out. Um, this one is popping out a little bit, but that's not my loose end. That's just a stitch, part of the stitch. Okay. And then again, for the finishing fasten off yarn here. So it ends up at the top because we ended with a chain. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a couple stitches just because I want to move it over to a different section. So now I'm going to go through, I've decided this stitch. I don't want it to be the one right beside the other one. I think it's easier when it's not. I'm going to weave through a couple and then I'm going to go down and underneath this stitch at the bottom and it's all one stitch. It's not crossing stitches there. And then I'm going to again loop over top of this one and I'm going to loop back up through some loops and then up through the middle again. And then I'm going to clip it right near the top, as close as I can get. And then if I pull that stitch a bit, that's going to go down and hide in there. And there you go. Here it is. And that's all there is to it. Overall, I think it took me about under 10 minutes. Uh, and again, it depends on how many stitches you want to do. Okay, so I finished my scrunchie and all the loose ends are tucked in and it's perfect and ready to go. So, uh, just to kind of finalize this and, and talk about it a little bit more for you, uh, very easy, quick to make. Probably took me under 10 minutes for sure for each one. Uh, the amount of yarn is not that much. If you want to use a different type of yarn, like maybe you want worsted instead of bulky, uh, make sure that you move your hook size accordingly and know that it's not gonna be as tall and wide here. It's gonna be shorter and you'll need more stitches, so it will take more time um, and probably more yarn, uh, depending on how many stitches you need to put in to get the ripple effect. Uh, I love making these, they're super easy, super fun, uh, great gifts. And putting them in really modern colors really modernizes it. Uh, I grew up in the 80s, so I didn't expect that we would be having a comeback with scrunchies, but uh, it's really fun to make. And the velvety yarn here is really perfect for it. I really like it, but it'll work with anything and kind of any stitches, so have fun with it. You can find the full pattern and more features the written pattern on my blog, which is yarnworkstudio.com. That's yarnworks with an X. And you can follow me on social media at Yarnworks Studio. And if you want to look at this on Ravelry and post your post your finished project to there, these are called the Velvety Scrunchie. And please tag me. Uh, maybe use the hashtag Velvety Scrunchies when you're making these, so I can see your finished makes and post them out for everyone to love and enjoy. Hope you're having a great day, and hope you love this pattern. Bye bye.